maybe throw this out to any of you to answer, but um, you know, it sounds like more and more of our patients might start getting daratumumab up front um, as part of their induction therapy, uh, particularly those who are maybe not so fit. Um, faced with a patient who's had daratumumab in the past, would you use it again or would you switch this to tuximab? So um, open for anybody. But... Well, also I'll take a first stab at that. And so it, it does depend on the length of administration when you give it for induction and maintenance-based therapy. So for the Griffin trial, uh, Peter said that it's stopped, daratumumab is stopped at two years and then patients are continuing lenalidomide. And they may be on lenalidomide for two, three, or four more years before they have disease relapse. And in that scenario, those patients are for sure, in my mind, CD38 sensitive. And that person, I would feel fine putting them on esituximab plus pomalidomide. I'd probably feel fine putting them also on dertumab plus pomalidomide. But if they were on a CD38 when they progress, when they relapse, then going from one CD38 to the other is not going to really be an effective strategy. So I wouldn't recommend that. Anybody disagree with that or agree? I agree completely with what he's saying. I think it's very reasonable. Um, Emery had, has presented a little bit of data about going back and using Dara specifically with carfilzomib in people who previously even progressed on daratumumab, and they still had a response rate that was re respectable. It was in the like sort of 27, 28% range. So, you know, I, I would agree with Tom that, you know, somebody who's progressing very quickly on an anti-CD38 antibody isn't probably going to benefit from either one. So I want to challenge you all. Thank you for that. I, I want to challenge you all on your choice. So uh, you talked about using pomalidomide and a lenalidomide refractory, but there are a couple of trials now suggesting that it's, it's um, that you can combine carfilzomib with daratumumab and have an image sparing regimen in those patients. So um, I'm going to go with a person I think is least likely to like that. I actually like that combination, Keith. The carfilzomib uh, daratumumab combination is great. I think the initial challenge was when you're giving two IV drugs, the duration of the treatment, but we've started split dose dera, and just this past week, we've started using subcutaneous uh, daratumumab as well. So that makes it even more convenient, certainly in patients who have very aggressive bone disease and where you want real good responses quickly. I have absolutely used carfilzomib with daratumumab. The data looks quite good. Yeah, go ahead, Tom. Can I, can I add to that? Sure. So I, I want to make sure that also um, we recognize that at the European Hematology Association meetings that um, Philippe Moreau presented data from isotuximab with, also with carfilzomib, so the IKEMA trial. Very good. And, yeah. and yeah, with the IKEMA trial, in fact, there was a significant advantage again to the triplet isotuximab plus carfilzomib index versus the doublet carfilzomib index. And actually, the, the um, hazard ratio is quite low, 0 0.5. So that was the best hazard ratio for an esituximab study. So that actually looked very promising, too. So I agree with you. That is a great regimen for the patients who have lenalidomide refractory disease. Yeah. Also, just to add, you know, there is a subset of patients who just don't do well on an image. And yes. that patient population, this combination is actually a very useful combination to get to. Or they can't get access to an IBID for, for financial reasons or insurance problems. Yeah. One, one of the things that, so we have two big trials now, the CANDER study, which was carfilzomib and uh, daratumumab versus carfilzomib and dexamethasone alone. And then we have this study that Tom just mentioned from uh, uh, Dr. Moreau presented of isotuximab, carfilzomib and dexamethasone versus carfilzomib, dexamethasone alone. Both positive studies for progression-free survival both show reasonable tolerability. Um, I guess what the one thing is they both use carfilzomib, I think, in the pretty conventional way, which is somewhat inconvenient for patients. I mean, earlier on, Tom, I meant to call you out for like not more than nine months of carfilzomib. That's a lot for patients to, to <laughs> come in. How many people are still using twice weekly carfilzomib and how many are using uh, uh, weekly dosing? So, um, Peter, so I'm using weekly carfilzomib exclusively at this point. And when using it with daratumumab, um, I, I use the 70 milligram per meter squared uh, weekly dose. Have you had any challenges with that in terms of toxicity? 
I don't think that there's any significant difference in toxicity relative to the uh, twice weekly, and the Arrow study would support that. Um, Natalie, what, what's your experience with yeah, using? Yeah, we, we use weekly carfilzomib um, most often at 56 and 70. Um, you know, Arrow study uh, obviously out there, but um, we only use twice a week if, if a study requires it. And the dosing of carfilzomib, I think, depends on the backbone. If it's cyclophosphamide or DARA based, I use the 70, but if it's imid based, I'll use a 56 milligram per meter squared weekly dose. So, so one of the, uh, so I guess another, what we're saying in summary is that there are alternatives for lenalidomide refractory or intolerant patients, which uh, combine two of our most active drugs, uh, an, an anti-CD38 antibody with a very active proteasome inhibitor.